my channel. We're going to be doing a QA and a video. You guys asked me some questions on Instagram and I thought it was time because I've never done a Q&A by myself. I did one with my husband like months ago. I'll link that above. It was a two-parter because there were so many questions and we wanted to get it all out for you guys. Um, that's probably going to be the same thing today because there's so many. So if you want to see a future um, part two, let me know because there's over 50 questions. So... <laughs> Yeah, so I'm not gonna be able to get to all of them, but I'm gonna try to get to as many of them as possible. If you wanna see a future video, definitely give this video a like so I know that you're interested in that. And if you have not already, please subscribe. If you want to, not gonna make you, so consider it before you leave. Um, so yeah, the first question I wanted to answer um, has actually been a question that has been on a lot of my videos, especially here recently, because my channel doubled in size <laughs> within like a month's time. Um, if you're like, if you've been on my channel for a while, then you've seen it grow like it happened overnight and I just sat back and I couldn't keep up with it. But there's so many new people, so they have a lot of new questions, which is why I wanted to or or the same questions if there's any questions that has already been answered in that previous q a video then i won't answer those just because i don't want to be repetitive to people that have already seen it but um if you haven't and you notice your question was answered go head out and check that video out to see what the answer is um and i'll probably let you know while i'm answering them if the question's already been asked but the question that has been asked a lot is what nationality what ethnicity what are you they look at me and they can't figure it out and i don't blame you because if you're not from the area that i'm from then you probably wouldn't know what i am um and i'm just i'm really thankful that the people that have asked don't already assume i have had some really ugly comments in the past of people i would tell them what my ethnicity is and they would pretty much try to fight me on it and tell me that i'm lying and i don't know what i'm talking about but I am Native American. Both my mother and my father are both Native American. I'm not mixed. A lot of people look at me and they're like, oh, she's black and white. She's black and Mexican. She's black and Asian. I had somebody tell me that when I was in hair school. But I'm Native American. More specifically, I am from the Lumbee tribe, um, which is very saturated in North Carolina. More specifically, the Robinson County area. That's where a lot of my... Um, you know, fellow tribal members, family members, they live. Um, so like I said, if you're not from that area, then you wouldn't necessarily recognize me. I know it sort of throws people off because of my features and my curly hair. Um, I guess they assume when they think Native American, they're like, that girl does not look like Pocahontas. But that's a whole nother story for a whole nother day and we're not gonna get into that. But I did wanna touch on that first. If you were wondering, I'm Native American from the Lumbee tribe. So now we're gonna take it to the Instagram post. I'm gonna just like, flip through and try to find some. I was sort of answering them in my head as I was um, reading through them. Um, let's see. What made you start your channel and do you ever want to have kids? We've already talked about kids on our last video, so go watch that. But um, what made you start your channel? What made me start my channel? I did talk about it a little bit last night on my Instagram live. That was fun. I love doing that. But um, what made me want to start my channel was that I'd moved to a new place. Um, I am about an hour and a half away from everybody and everything that I've ever known. I've always lived there. And when I moved here, it was a little bit of culture shock and I was a little bit out of my element. And if you can't tell, I am a quite a bit of a social butterfly I've always hung around a lot of people and I love being around people I thrive off of that if you know anything about um, personality things I'm an ENFP if you know what that means it's a Myers-Briggs test that you can take Myers-Briggs I think that's how you pronounce it I'll try to find it and link it below um, but it sort of just tells you what you are and it was spot on I am an extrovert to the 1000th percent um, I love being around people and I um, I pull off of their energy, even if it's bad energy, sadly. Um, but I do try to, you know, pick people up with my bubbliness. But um, I love being around people. And when I got here, I didn't know anybody. And I was watching YouTube. I've been on YouTube ever since 2009. Not saying that I was uploading ever since then. I did used to upload some really old singing videos. I don't suggest watching those. They are poor quality. But if you want to hear me sing, go watch them. Um, but... I have been watching them forever and I felt like 
I knew them like once you so I understand how y'all feel like y'all know me <laughs> so um you watch these videos and you just feel like you know them and you understand what's going on in their life and you just feel connected and I wanted that I wanted to feel connected and I had so much that I love to share um I've always posted videos on my Facebook and little snippets on you know Snapchat Instagram Twitter whatever um I've always shared stuff about my life so I thought why not share it on YouTube I had no idea when I started it that it could be beneficial in more of like a profitable way like money wise you can make a business out of it I had no idea um I totally was winging it I was just posting stuff I think my first video was November 2015 and I was just posting what I had bought at Dollar Tree and Walmart that day like total random like I literally walked in I was like I'm gonna film a video I did not plan it I didn't put on any makeup like if I had on makeup it's because I already had it on it was totally not planned so I mean it was a whim I started but then after that um, early December I literally only posted for like a month and I totally stopped um, I was getting super busy I was back in school I was back in a salon working and I just didn't have time for it and I started feeling like I was missing something and it was YouTube and I was having some technical difficulties with my computer so I finally went out and got a computer um, and I started fiddling around with it a little bit until I figured out how to use iMovie on it again because it was completely different than my old version and May 12th of 2015 no 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 16 <laughs> May 12th 2016 is technically my anniversary date that I like to claim because that's when I really started doing YouTube that's actually my husband's birthday um but so May 12th this year will be like my official one year anniversary on YouTube I started with like a hundred subscribers because I had some that had been sort of following me um, from when I was doing singing videos a long time ago. So I started with about 100-ish. And here we are now at almost 11,000 in a year almost. So that's amazing. But that was long-winded. But that's why I started the channel. Do you have any siblings? Yes, I have a brother. If you've seen my Easter vlog, he was on there. Um, we are 16 months apart. I'm the oldest. But when you see us with each other, people normally think he's the oldest. I guess because he's bigger. And his beard. I don't know what it is, but I'm 16 months older than he is. April 1st, December 24th. We both have Jesus-related birthdays. That's what we always do. You are very young and seem to have your life in order. Marriage, work, and keeping a wonderful home. Um, I love your channel so much. Thank you. Um, if you could go back in time, would you do anything different? Um, I just turned 26, April Fool's Day. Um, so I guess I might be young. I guess I am. I don't know. Um, I don't have my life together. I don't think anybody can ever have their life together. I know when you look on social media and you only post, you know, positivity for the most part. Of course, there are some people that show negativity. But for the most part, um, we only show the good things in our life on social media. Not saying there's a lot of bad. Um, but... I don't think that I have it all together. I strive to have it all together. We're never going to be perfect, um, but I strive to be more Christ-like, which she is absolutely perfect. And um, if you didn't know, I am a Christian, and I love me some Jesus. G-O-D. All the way. <laughs> I think that has helped a lot in my life, especially um, within the past few years. We've been doing a lot more... Um, seeking christ and putting him more in our life that has helped a lot i'm not trying to push don't think i'm trying to push him on you because i'm not whatsoever um if you but if you ever look at me and you wonder where this you know this sweet spirit and this positivity comes from that's where it comes from and he has helped us get our lives on track um but we've always been very um goal oriented and very organized as much as possible um in our lives so we are we don't have a lot of debt we don't have a lot of credit cards we don't have a lot of bills we don't like just willy-nilly spend like spend our money we're very money conscious people i married a very um his head's on really tight my husband he knows what he's doing um he's a hard worker so i looked up with him and um, very, I'm very blessed to have him in my life. Um, so we, we really balance each other out. I have the ideas and he can, you know, motivate me to get the stuff done because sometimes <laughs> I have the idea and I never 
see it through so I will say that my husband has a lot to do with me seeming like I guess I have it all together um, he keeps me on track I keep him on his toes and he keeps me on track but oh and you also said if you could go back in time would you do anything different absolutely not I wouldn't do anything different because I would not be the person that I am today I would not have the people in my life that I have today um, if I would have chose a different path and that's just not what God intended for me to have and for me to be so I wouldn't choose anything different I love who I am I love the people that are in my life I love what I do so no wouldn't change a thing if you could travel anywhere outside of your country where would you go what's your dream vacation <sighs> out of my country I want to go to Hawaii like really bad I want to go to Hawaii really bad is that out of the country <laughs> my geographical <laughs> skills <laughs> suck so if that's not out of the country then i do want to go to see what is it disney in paris like the disney world disneyland in paris whatever it is i'm obsessed with disney so i would love to go see that i know that's out of the country for sure how do you keep up with the pet hair i feel like i can deep clean my entire house and then wake up the next morning and it's back with a vengeance so here's a tip you never get rid of it <laughs> it's always there like you said it is I mean you can sweep and vacuum every single day and there's going to be a little bit of it you can never stay on top of it especially before we brought walnut in walnut is our beagle he does shed whereas lady is a Yorkie and she doesn't shed she's hyperallergenic she'll lose like a little ball of hair here and there but I can literally pick it up it's like a little bit of hair and throw it away but with walnut I sweep a whole lot more than I have ever in my entire life and you can see it collecting around on baseboards and I'm like oh, I just done this yesterday and plus I shed myself <laughs> so, <laughs> our bathroom is the worst room in the house as far as having to sweep it I don't care if I sweep it every single day there will still be hair accumulating on the baseboard so I'm, I'm sorry I couldn't come up with a better answer I've never been able to get rid of him so so then somebody says how old are you and your hubby i just said i'm 26 he's 25 he will be 26 may 12th um so i have like a couple days ahead of him not many like but i always tell him to respect his elders because <laughs> i am a little bit older than him but we graduated high school together and we talked about that in our um husband and wife q a what denomination do you and your husband follow and will you be making a testimony video um, denomination we are at a, a Pentecostal holiness church we get down um, it is not one of those faint of heart churches if you're scared of people hollering and a running and a jumping and a dancing and a singing then you don't want to go there because that's what we do and I love that we I didn't grow up in that kind of church we both grew up in a holiness Methodist church and we sung hymnals and we didn't there wasn't much of that there was the occasional running but running and shouting but very occasional um i feel like at our church there's that like almost every sunday and it was like when i walked in i was like this is it like this is this is my church and i mean i grew up in that church my entire life up until i was probably 21 and then when i went to that church everything was just everything was exactly what my heart had ever wanted and i just loved it like i said i love music and they i need music to open me up and prepare me for service like i don't need to go straight into service because i feel like my mind and my heart isn't in the place that it needs to be for service for the message that the preacher has prepared so i feel like the music i need that to get me in that place where i'm ready i'm ready to hear exactly what you're going to say i'm going to be able to take it in and understand it and learn something from it whereas if you just jump up there and there's no music i feel like i'm going to sort of drift off and i'm not going to pay attention like i should so the music is everything it's everything the preaching is everything the atmosphere is everything there's so much love in my church i love my preacher and his wife i love the assistant preacher and his wife i love everybody it's just and I know some of them watch my vlogs and my videos and whatever, but there, someone might be watching this. And if you are, I love y'all. I love my church family, but there's that.
Do you and your husband have date nights? And if so, what are some of your favorite things to do together? We have a lot of date nights because we don't have children yet. Um, so we are able to spend a lot of time together and I foresee, you know, when we do have kids, we're still gonna have a lot of date nights. Even though we're away from family and it's not gonna be so easy to be like, hey, come over and watch the kids. We're gonna go out. We're not gonna have that luxury. Um, so we're gonna have to get creative and have some at-home date nights. We'll see how that goes whenever that day comes. But we do have a lot of date nights. We turn a lot of ordinary things into a date night. Um, we love going to Home Depot and Lowe's. <laughs> we love it. Like, I am not hard to please at all. Like, take me to McDonald's to the drive through and park and let's just listen to some music and talk about our day and eat our food. And I am perfect. I mean, one of my favorite places to go with him is the Waffle House. Like, we'll do the Waffle House and just sit and laugh and talk and eat our wonderful breakfast food. I mean, I'm not hard to please. And we talked about that on our last q and I mean... Of course, it's nice to go to a fancy restaurant or go to the movies, whatever you guys do on date nights, have like a little spa night. We do that occasionally. We'll light some candles and give each other a massage and watch like a really nice movie. Um, it's just, I guess it all depends on what you and your husband like to do, but we just like to be around each other. So, How many kids do you want and when do you want them? Um... I would like to have two, possibly three. Um, we don't have the biggest of families and neither one of us really have. Um, my brother, I don't ever foresee having children. So I don't foresee them having cousins and he doesn't really know his sisters like that. Um, so we don't really, we're not really around them. Um, so as far as our kids being able to grow up and have cousins to play with, they won't at least i don't <laughs> i mean they might but i don't foresee that happening so i would like to have more kids i would like to have three i i pick at cody all the time and i'm like oh, what are we going to name kid number six and he's like what who's kid because we ain't having six <laughs> so i mean i would like to have three i think three is a good number i mean i have a big suv that i can put five of them in <laughs> but i don't know i mean i would like to have at least two i'd like to have a boy and a girl and if the same gender comes out, then I'm going to try for number three, whether Cody wants to or not. <laughs> what helps you when you're going through a difficult time and you know people are saying things about you that aren't true? Um, people you thought you could trust. And it also says, P.S. I just love your channel and I feel like we could be besties in real life. Thank you for being you and being down to earth. Thank you for saying such sweet things. I have some of the sweetest subscribers. Okay, answering your question. Um, when I'm going through a difficult time, Music helps me a lot. Um, prayer helps me a lot. Um, talking about it in general. Even if I'm not talking to somebody face to face, I can pull out my camera and just sit and talk. And I may never even post it, but just know when I got it off my chest. Some people like to write. You can write whatever is going on. If you keep a little journal or a diary, that's really cool too. Um, but I feel like getting something off your chest and I do not suggest putting it out on social media for other to see, others to see. I just I don't understand why people take their problems and post it all over social media. I don't understand because all that's going to happen is you're going to look crazy. And two, if you're talking about a significant other person and you're calling them out, I mean, it's just, it can cause so much more drama than you need in your life. Because if you're already having a difficult time, why put more stress on to you? So if you need to privately deal with something to get over it, just go ahead and get it over with. If you, like I said, if you need to pub, if you need to speak about it on something just to get it out, then get it out, but delete it later. Don't post it. Um, so I definitely like to express my feelings when I'm dealing with something. I think that helps because leaving everything all bottled up inside can really wreck with your, um, mental stability you know, emotionally even physically so get it out there if somebody that you trusted is doing something ugly then leave them alone get them out of your life keep it moving don't say anything you know bad to them and just create more problems but just move on i've done this before i've had some situations with people that i really trusted and i just really love them and they hurt my feelings and i know it's sad and it makes you mad all at the same time and you put so much effort into that relationship that friendship and they go off and they do something that's hurtful i know that hurts i've been there we've all been there but i think what 
really shows what type of person you are is how you deal with things like that. You can either go in, go in a roundabout way of doing something ugly and doing something to hurt them back, but all that's going to do in the end is hurt you even more because you haven't gotten any closure about it at all. Now you're just madder because you've done something and maybe they didn't react the way you wanted them to. You might you might wanted them to cry or be upset and they didn't. And now you're even madder because they didn't react the way you wanted them to. So just move on. I know Medea said, if you're familiar with Tyler Perry, she talks about how people, um, she talks about people like as a tree and your good friends, the people that are going to be there for you are your roots. They hold you down. They help you grow. I mean, there's stability. Then there's some people that are leaves and they're branches and they're just only there for a season and they fall off and they go do, you know, they go on their, they go on their merry little ways and not everybody is meant to be in your life all of the time. Maybe they're only supposed to be there for a couple months. Maybe they're only supposed to be there for a couple years. Or maybe they're supposed to be there forever. Maybe they're supposed to be there when you get married or when you have kids or at your funeral to read your your eulogy. I mean, I don't know. Everybody has a, a purpose for your life. But don't get so upset because somebody has hurt you. Um, and I'm speaking to myself. Um, don't let it harm you in such a way where you aren't being yourself anymore. What do you do for your husband around the house to make his life easier? Laying out his clothes, fix his lunch, etc. So, what do I do? Obviously, I am home d throughout the week, um, you know, while he's working. Um, and on the weekends, um, depending on what weekend it is, I'll be working myself. During the week, I do make his breakfast and lunches for the most part. Right now, he's on night shift and it's just crazy and I'm not able to do it like normal. Um, I did make him some lunch and send it with him, but typically I like to make as much as I can here while he's here to eat it here and he can take something with him. Um, I don't lay out his clothes anymore because he's picky. <laughs> and every time I would lay something out, he was like, man, why didn't you lay out the other shirt? And I'm like, never again, lay it out yourself. But um, I, I try to be as helpful as possible. Um, I do get on him about putting stuff away, but I always end up putting it up myself. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm like, okay, he works so hard. He does so much for me. You know, I try to make it as easy and simple for him as I can. He does help me out around the house when he can, um, which I love that about him. But for the most part, I try to try to do as much as I can. I do wash all of his clothes. I do put all of his clothes away. Um, so yeah, that's that's pretty much that's it. What was the first meal you cooked for your husband after you got married, and do you think he could remember? I don't even know if I remember. I know after we got married, I don't even remember. We cook a lot of breakfast. Like I know when we first started dating, that was like the first thing I cooked was breakfast. And that's the first thing he ever cooked me. I do remember that was breakfast food. Um, grits, eggs, bacon or sausage. It was one of one or the other. And maybe some toast or something. But we love breakfast food. We had breakfast food at our wedding. We did like a breakfast buffet. And we had a waffle bar. And everybody could have like their own little waffles. They had fruit and whipped topping and all kinds of stuff. Um, so we love breakfast. Which is why we love Waffle House. But um, it was probably breakfast food, and he would probably say breakfast food too, just because of how much we make it. Um, okay, somebody said, I'm from the South too. Is there anything about the South that you hate? Mosquitoes. I hate mosquitoes, and I hate frogs and lizards. That's probably not just a Southern thing, but Jesus Christ. I don't even go outside. Like during the day here when it's hot outside or when it's warmer and the sun's out, the lizards are out, and I'm just like, looking around the corner before I can even go outside. And the frogs come out at night when it's dark and it's cool. <laughs> so it's like, can't go outside at night, can't go outside during the day. Guess I'll never go outside. Do you ever do any outside videos with planting flowers, etc.? Okay, so I don't have a green thumb at all. I wish I did. If you do and you have some tips for me, help me out because I kill everything, like everything. And I guess I get that from my mama because she kills stuff too. The only thing that she's ever been able to keep alive is her hydrangea bush. And I'm hoping that mine stays alive. I got one last year. Um, it looks like it's coming back. I hope it's coming back, but I literally kill everything else. And we just recently bought some really pretty big hanging basket ferns to go on the front porch. 
I'm hoping they don't die. I've been trying to water them. I think my problem is watering them. I don't know how much to water them or if I'm not doing it enough. I don't know, but I will never do a video on that because I killed them. If you were a vegetable, which would you be and why? That is an interesting question. If I was a vegetable, if I was a vegetable, I would be corn. Corn on the cob with a husk because <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I just love corn. I love corn and I guess it's sort of native-y because they call it maize and <laughs> I would just be corn. I don't know why I would be corn. That's the first thing that popped in my head. Do you speak any fluent languages besides English? I don't speak any other language but English and some of y'all was probably like she really don't speak English that well either. <laughs> whatever what are your top tips for keeping a successful and happy marriage put my phone down on that one so um this october the 11th we will be married for three years now and it has not been easy we love each other so much i know that they try to say like when you read like online little things or you watch movies they're like um as long as the love's still there, that's all you need in a marriage. And love is not all you need in a marriage. You need compromise. You need sacrifice. And I'm not trying to say that 100% of the time you are going to sacrifice things to please your spouse. Don't do that because you're going to lose yourself. And if they love you and want to work with you and your marriage, then they will make some sacrifices themselves. They can be like, okay, I know you really want to do this or you really want to have that. Then I won't get this this time. You can get that. And then the next time you trade off, be like, okay, well, the last time you were so nice and sweet and you allowed me to do this. So now we're going to let you do that. And I mean, I know that might sound a little iffy to some of you like allowing and you're able to get this, but that's just how we make it work. I think that has really helped our marriage. And not only, not only that, but actually listening. I know that's hard for some of you out there. You don't want to listen to what the other one has going on. Um, but a good thing about our marriage is we started out being friends. And I understand not everybody starts out being friends. You might just run straight into love and relationshipness. But we were friends first. And I think that helped a lot with our relationship. Um, we knew each other on a different level than, you know, what you do when you go into a relationship. Sometimes when you go into a relationship, there's things you don't share with them. It's kind of like they figure it out on the way down the road. But in our friendship, we were able to learn more stuff about each other. We were able to learn about each other's previous relationships because we seen each other go through them. Um, so I just think that helped us out a lot and we do talk about it on our last, I know I've said this a thousand times, but we do talk about it on our last Q&A video. You can actually see us engaging with one another, talking about how we are having a successful marriage. If you have a disagreement, do not take it into another day. And I mean, I understand we try to not go to bed angry. I can't, I mean, I just can't. Like I physically cannot go to bed. Like I won't sleep at all. Um, but my husband is the type where he needs to cool off a little bit. And if we're having a little, a little debate, a little argument at the end of the day, and he's so tired and he has to be able, you know, to fully function and get enough rest for the next day at work. Um, I don't want to like harp on him. Let's fix this before we go to sleep. I don't want to do that, but he understands that if we don't fix it or at least get on a good ground, we sort of like pause and we'll tell each other that we love each other and we'll go to bed and we're not mad at each other, but we know that the next day that we're just going to have to talk about something. So in that case, you know, we don't possibly, there's sometimes we don't fix everything right then, but we understand that we love one another and we're going to work towards fixing this problem. I hope you guys enjoyed this. Hopefully it wasn't too long winded and there was just too much random talking going on. But, um, I think you guys enjoy these random talking videos. 
I love them. I love watching them, especially when it's like one of my favorite YouTubers. I'm like, oh, she's going to talk. Let me just listen. So I understand why y'all love them so much. Thank you guys that took the time out to go to my Instagram post and leave me those questions. You guys have some really awesome questions. I wish I had time to answer more of them. But like I said, we're going to do it later on in the future. So I hope you guys have a beautiful and blessed day. And thanks for watching. Bye, guys. I'm over here, gotta get across Whether you like it, like it or not